wasn't was too happy with his performance. He just felt like he missed a couple there. Did he feel like he could have given you some more stuff? Happy Monday, everyone. Try not to react this way the first time you get asked a stupid question at work. This is SportsCenter. Hey, I'm Julia Tesheri filling in for Marissa Roberto. We're not sure if you've looked at the top of the NHL standings lately, but they're absolutely wild right now. And with only two games on tonight, they won't be affected too much when it comes to the absolutely insane race for the President's Trophy. As it stands right now, seven teams are in contention. And I said in contention, but it's actually seven teams that are within a point of each other. How is that even possible? Usually there's a set winner by right now. It just goes to show how jammed up the top is. It really feels like anybody could win the Stanley Cup this year. The Canucks and Rangers are both at the top with 98 points, with the following five all sitting at 97. What makes this race so intriguing is that it also trickles down to the divisions, with three of the four up for grabs with less than 15 games to go. But when it comes to who's playing the best right now, it's got to be the Colorado Avalanche. The Avs haven't lost since the trade deadline. They've won nine in a row and are in first in the Central. They've got the most wins on home ice in the league, as they are 28-6 and six in Colorado. It also helps their President's Trophy case that seven of their last 11 are at home. Nathan McKinnon has a point in every single home game. I have to stay up late to watch more Colorado games at home because I have to tell you honestly, I haven't seen enough of these but Nate is just on a different level this year. He's also on an 18 game point streak and broke Joe Sackick's single season franchise point record. He did fall behind in the Art Ross race though because Nikita Kucherov has gone absolutely crazy. Now, if you're picking an East team, the Rangers are the hottest there as they've got seven wins in their last 10 games. And just like the Avs, they've got seven of their last 11 at home. But of those 11, eight of them are against non-playoff teams. Does anyone even want the President's Trophy? It just kind of feels like a curse. Time now for my favorite segment and yours, Why We Love Sports Today. Why we love sports today. And this little kid mimicking a dart player he sees on TV. It is exactly what we need on a Monday. Oh my gosh, I, that, honestly, it's shocking to me that that baby, I don't know anything about babies doing stuff or when they're supposed to do stuff. Um, that is very impressive. I, to me, that baby doesn't even look old enough to walk. So, good job, baby. And let's stick with the joyful little kid thing here. Marissa must be off. Because as you can tell from the caption, this is the most chaotic home run sequence. Okay. Oh, I hated T-ball when I was a kid because they only let you run one base at a time. How was that encouraging of athletics? Oh, wow, he went down. Okay, you okay, little buddy? Yep, he looks like he's okay. The other kid's still running though, he don't care. If I know anything about T-Ball though, somebody's gonna yell at him and it's gonna be embarrassing and maybe scar him for life. I would know. <laughs> to March Madness now, and it is a huge one tonight. As Caitlin Clark tries to punch her ticket to the Sweet 16, as Iowa takes on West Virginia. Clark was unreal in Iowa's round one beatdown of Holy Cross. As she was close to a triple double, dropping 27 points, 10 dimes, and eight boards. She has literally been doing it all. And most importantly, as I mentioned, it was a beatdown as Iowa won by 26 in round one. There's so much pressure on her right now. She's done it all except for that national title. Game one, didn't disappoint. But it gets much tougher tonight against West Virginia, as the Mountaineers are 25 and seven this season and had a nice win against a really good Princeton squad in round one. And you can watch West Virginia and Iowa tonight on TSN. Coverage begins at eight Eastern, five Pacific. <laughs> to the association and the Raps are back in action tonight in what could actually be a crucial game against Brooklyn. Let's start with the bad, which in the context of this Raptors season is actually the good. Toronto's lost 10 straight, the longest losing streak in the NBA by far right now. But this thing still has a long way to go to reach all time terrible in franchise history, as the 97-98 Raptors actually had two streaks worse than this, as they lost 17 straight, which is the worst in franchise history, but also lost 13 straight at a different point in that season. And Raps fans remember, those losses paid off on draft night as they took Anton Jameson fourth overall and then immediately traded him for Vince Carter, who went on to change the course of Raps franchise history. But this year, the Raps might not even be able to keep that pick. As we've told you all year, if it falls out of the top six, it's going to the Spurs. Right now, they currently have the sixth worst record in the NBA, but it's pretty tight with Memphis. And then they have to survive the lottery. As things currently stand, the most likely landing spot for their pick would be pick number seven with a 29.8% chance. And as I just told you, that pick would go to San Antonio. But let's look at the positives. 
there's still a 45.8% chance that that pick lands at either one, two, three, four, or six. Tonight, they get a team close to them in the bottom of the standings and one that's also been bad lately as the Nets have lost six straight. That is all for me today. Luke is going to be filling in for Marissa tomorrow. Have a great day.